Hey guys, sorry it took so long. Um, I was having an issue getting your notes into the app so that way I could like write and draw on them and all that stuff. So, sorry about that. Um, so, I'm going to try and make this as quick and painless as possible. Um, so, your notes are over adding and subtracting radicals. There are two major steps when you do this. The first one is to make sure that the, everything has been simplified. Um, that will be whether we take the number and do a factor tree and we factor out certain numbers or that could be where we plug things into a calculator and find the factors, find the perfect squares and go that way. Um, but the very first thing we have to do every single time is make sure that our radicals have been simplified. Okay, that's big thing number one. Um, the second thing that we have to do um, to add or subtract the radicals. Notice it says the indices. What I mean by that is the index. So hold on, let me see if I can zoom in here without like killing someone. Okay, that probably gave some of you motion sickness. Um, but the indices is the index. And if you're curious about where the index is, if we have a square root, okay, the index is right here. It's the number that goes right there. Okay. So in order to add or subtract radicals and square roots, the index and whatever's inside, so this thing down here that we like to call the radicand, because it's inside the square root, um, they actually have to be the same. Okay, the number inside the square root and the little number inside, like, the index has to be exactly the same. Um, so it's almost like a like terms sort of a thing. If they are the same, then we can add or subtract the terms that are in front of each like radical. And when I, when I say in front, I mean the number that's right outside the radical, like outside the garage, okay? Um, if those things aren't the same at all, we actually can't even add or subtract them. There's no possible way we can do it, and our answer stays the way it is, okay? Um, okay, I'm sorry, I just got distracted. There's like a little mini ninja in the bottom of my screen, and I don't know how it got there, um, so I'm going to try to focus. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the this first problem. I'm asking you to add and subtract the square root of 98 plus the square root of 50 minus the square root of 18. Um, the first thing that I can tell, and I'm going to be honest, I haven't actually done this problem. So this is the first time I've done it. Um, but looking at each one of these, I can see that I can simplify them. Okay, I have to simplify them, otherwise that right there is just my answer. So I'm going to go into the calculator, I'm going to go into y equals, um, and I'm going to type in 98 divided by x, and I'm going to look at the table. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the x and the y values to see if I get any that are perfect squares. And remember, and I'll even write them up here, um, our perfect squares... are going to be the numbers and we're looking we're looking for these numbers um, to go into our radicands evenly so we're going to look for the number four the number nine sixteen twenty five thirty six forty nine sixty four 81, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, because if I find these numbers in the table, I know that the square root of these numbers is here in blue. Okay, so if I take the square root of 25, I know it's going to be 5. If I take the square root of 81, I automatically know it's going to be 9. So I'm looking for those black numbers, those perfect squares. Okay, um, 
So looking at the table for the square root of 89, the first thing that I notice is that um, to get 89, and it's right there, it's 2 times 49. 49 is a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the square root of 89. I don't know why I keep saying 89. It's definitely 98. Um as the square root of 2 times 49. Also, if you hear that random like screeching in the background, I don't know if you can. It's my cat. He's actually crying and trying to get outside because he thinks he's a dog. Um, and now I'm going to go back and do the same thing under y equals for 50. Okay, now remember, still looking for a perfect square. Go ahead and look at my table. Um, 1 times 50, and 2 times 25. 25 is perfect square, so 2 times 25. Okay, minus, see if I can even simplify 18. We're going to go back to y equals, type in 18 divided by x. Look at our table, 2 times 9. <laughs> Okay, now for those of you who are like, what? I found my perfect squares, 49, 25, and 9. So now I'm going to take the square roots of those perfect squares and move the answer outside the radical. Okay, so the square root of 49 is 7. Oh, so we have 7 square root 2 plus square root of 25 is 5 square root 2 minus the square root of 9 is 3 square root 2. Now in order for me to be able to even add or subtract these things, the catch that we had to look for was that the index, so the number inside that little like V thing of the radicand has to be the same, and right now it is, and the number inside the radicand has to be the same, and it is. So what we're going to do from left to right is we're going to add the numbers that are on the outside of the square root. Okay, so whatever is inside the square root does not change. So my answer is going to be some number square root 2. That's not going to change. So 7 plus 5 is 12. Minus 3 gives me 9. So the answer to that problem is 9 square root 2. Okay? So our second example looks like this. This one's a little bit more fun. Um, and we're, and I can tell because I see, I see this thing right here. Again, I've never done this problem, so who knows, I might do some crazy fun things. We're going to see if we can simplify these. So, I'm going to go back to y equals, type in 20. Two numbers that multiply to 20, and one of them has to be a perfect square. I see 2 times 10. Neither of those are perfect squares. 4 times 5, that is a perfect square. So we're going to rewrite this as 3 square root, and I'm going to do 4, plus 5. Okay, so I'm going to do my perfect squares in blue. Minus 6. Okay, so let's go to y equals, type in 125 divided by x. Let's look at our table. Okay, I see 5 times 25. So I know 25 is my perfect square plus 5 square root and we're going to go back and look at 45 divided by x. I see 3 times 15, neither of those are perfect squares. 5 times 9, perfect square. So we have Make it a little longer. Uh, 9 times 5. 9 times 5. 
okay? So everything that's in blue, we are going to take the square root of it because they're perfect squares, but there is a catch this time. Notice that with our problem, we have numbers outside the square roots, okay? So whenever we take the square root of our perfect square, we're going to multiply that answer by the number that's on the outside, okay? So example, this very first um, radical that we have, when I take the square root of 4, I know that that's going to be 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, minus, I know when I take the square root of 25, it's going to be 5. So 5 times 6 is 30, square root 5, plus square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 5, 15, square root 5. Okay, now remember, everything that has to do with the square root doesn't change. So part of my answer is automatically going to be some number times the square root of 5. Okay, so now we're going to add and subtract left to right the numbers on the outside. So 6 minus 30 plus 15. Okay, and I actually end up with negative 9. And that's okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that Right there is my final answer. Negative 9 square root 5. Okay, so let's look at this last one. Okay, so the very first thing I notice is now we have square roots that aren't normal square roots. We have these things that look like a cubed root because there's a little three in the index. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to reorder this entire problem. I'm going to put everything that's to the same or like terms together and everything that's a cube, I'm going to put it towards the end. Okay? Oh, all right. So this problem might take up a little bit more space especially because I'm on an iPad which means I can't write. So this will be fun. It'll be fun. We got this. So 5 square root of 1, 12. Oh, that's not a 2. 12, okay. Plus 9, wow. 9 square root of 2, 52. Plus 4 cubed root of 54. minus 7 cubed root 16. Okay, so we're going to finish uh, this problem the way that we have been. I'm going to type in, um, we're going to do the first two um, radicals the way that we have been. Go to y equals, type in 112 divided by x, and let's look at our table, see if anything is a perfect square. One, 2 doesn't work, 4 works, 4 works, but 28 is a, can still be simplified. I see a 16, and the higher I get, yep, I see a 16. So 16 might be the highest we can get, so we're going to go ahead and rewrite that as 5 square root of... 16, we should probably do our square roots in a different color. So 16 times 7 plus 9. All right, so let's look at 252. Same idea. 252 divided by x. Let's look at our table. I see 36 and a 7. I don't see anything higher than a 36. Doesn't look like anyways. The next one would be a 49. I don't see that. I don't see 81. So it looks like it's 7 and 36.
All right. So those two should have been relatively easy by now. These ones, these next ones are going to pro uh they're going to give us a little bit more of a challenge, okay? And the reason I say that is because now we're not looking for a square root two numbers that multiply together to equal that number. We're looking for a cubed root. Okay, so now when I type in x divided by 54, or I'm sorry, 54 divided by x, I'm looking for two numbers where one of them is a cubed root. Okay, so let me just go ahead here real quick um, and give you some of our cubed roots, all right? So... Let me zoom out here, and this would be something I would write down and probably keep for my notes as well. So, cubed. It would help if I knew how to spell cubed. Okay, so some of our most common cubed roots are going to be 8. Twenty seven, sixty four, one twenty five, two sixteen, three forty seven, or three forty three, and five twelve. Okay, now if I plug each one of these into the calculator and take the cubed root, and there's a way that you can do that under math on the calculator. Um, when I plug these in, the cubed root of 8 is 2. Cubed root of 27, cubed root of 64, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I know that 8 cubed is 512, okay? So these numbers here are the most common cubed roots. These are the ones we're going to look for, okay? So I would pause the video. I would write these down. I would have them right next to your most common square roots, okay? Zoom out. Go back to our problem. Whoa, that was creepy. Do you see that? Okay. Like, I legit don't know how that works. I'm so confused right now. Okay, anyways, let's just write. Okay, that works. All right, cool. So I'm going to go 54. Okay, um, 54, first off, isn't even on our list. So I'm going to see if any numbers are cubed roots that go into 54, because that would be cool if they do. Um... So we're going to go 54 divided by x. And let's look at the table, see if any of them are there. So 1, we have 54, 27, 18. 18 is not on our list. 9 isn't on our list. 6 isn't on our list. Okay, so I see no, no cubed roots, okay? Maybe I can factor 54, though. So let's see. 54 divided by 2, divided by 3. Oh, there we go. Am I stupid tonight? Y'all, I might just be stupid because when I look at, wow, I am. I'm really dumb. Holy cow. 54 2 times 27 is 54, and 50, 27 is a perfect cube, okay? So we're going to write that here, okay, 27 times 2 minus 7 cubed root, okay, and we're going to do, do the same thing for 16.
Okay, eight is a perfect cube. So I know eight times two is 16. Okay, so we're gonna break down what we know using our square roots. Um, we're gonna take the square roots of our perfect squares and then we're gonna multiply them by whatever number's on the outside. So the square root of 16 is four, four times five is 20. So I have 20 square root seven plus the square root of 36 is six, six times nine is 54. Oops. Okay, and I know that I'll be able to eventually add these together um, because they have the same uh, square root 7. Now, when we get to the cubes, okay, remember, and let me zoom out so you can see this, the cubed root of 27 is 3. So just like we take the cubed root and then multiply the number by whatever's on the outside, we're going to do the same thing for the cubed root. So the cubed root of 27 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. So we have 12 cubed root of 2 minus the cubed root of 8 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Everything that's in blue we can add together. Everything that's in green, or er, green, everything that's in red, we can add together. So, 20 plus 54 is 74. So I have 74 square root 7. And then I have 12 cubed root 2 minus 14 cubed root 2. 12 minus 14 is negative 2. Negative 2 cubed root Two. That is my final answer. I apologize for the confusion on that. Um, I haven't done cubed roots in a very long time. So again, I apologize. I hope that made sense. I would make sure to copy down your most common cubed roots and your most common um, square roots.